the Solar Race 2023 across Kazakhstan is now underway. The race started on June the 11th, and the first competitive stage began on June the 17th. Next up is the second stage, finishing in Almaty. The race features a Bajaj Maxima tuk-tuk with a Slavyanka DA-90 motor with combined windings, manufactured by ASPP Weihai. The team includes the pilot Vladimir Popov, an investor in the Doing of Motors project, and a member of the Thousand Club. The mechanic Oleg Kovalev, chief engineer of the production corporation Resource. The Sandmobile races were first launched in Australia. The races have been popular for 20 years. It is the second time the race has been held in Kazakhstan. Eco-enthusiasts from Kazakhstan and Russia participate and support the event. We will show how the Tuk Tuk team has progressed from the start of the first competitive stage. Kudos to the team for their resilience. The results at this stage came as a complete surprise, primarily to the participants themselves. The guys are under tremendous pressure and are under difficult conditions. Their motivation is affected by many negative factors. But the Tuk Tuk continues to move forward. And as one of the subscribers said, the motor is the only flawless competitor in the race that has worked according to the rules and has not once let the team down. The route of the first competitive stage of the race is Ektobe Baikonur. Its distance is more than 800 km. At the start of the stage, the team had a minor road traffic accident with an Uzbek truck. No one was injured and the tuk-tuk was nicknamed Tuk Bump. The tuk-tuk is generally very appreciated on the road, and the team has already gathered a collection of epithets and names that the truckers give to our sun car. The most popular name is Shiburashka. Already on the first day of the competition stage, the leader of the race was determined, Daniel Vetrani, on the fast and lightweight sun car Rondok. On June the 18th, the Tuk Tuk covered 70 km and visited the beautiful town of Kromtau. Here is one of the world's two largest chromite ore deposits. Unfortunately, the international highway M32, which runs through the settlement, is in a precarious state. On the third day, the Tuk Tuk covered 89 km and saw the village of Bagetsai. It must be said that the Tuk Tuk journey is accompanied by magnificent scenery. The team regularly shares their experiences with their subscribers. Along with the team, everyone can take an online journey through Kazakhstan. On this leg of the journey, the Tuk Tuk survived rain and cold weather. Due to the cloudy conditions, the charge only reached 120 watt. It took a long time to charge. But our pilot Vladimir kept his good spirits up as he learned that the most accident-prone section of the road was almost over. He used the time needed to wait out the bad weather to analyze his mistakes. The one thing they didn't get wrong when putting together the tuk-tuk was good power generation from the solar panels, which, it's true, makes the already have a solar vehicle weather-dependent and not very maneuverable for racing. This is the first experience, and the main goal is to test and develop constructive solutions. The next two days, there were still connectivity problems. The team passed the villages of Karabutak and Ulgaisen. They entered what is known as the Valley of Death, a stretch of road completely without communications. This is where most accidents occur and where locals believe that the place is connected to the infernal world. The team solved the gear ship problem and reassembled the gearbox. In addition, they did not always get enough sleep. One night the pilot pulled a tick out of his neck on his own. Other nights, low guys got in the way. The team hoped for better weather and the tuk-tuk covered 57 km. It's not an easy test for the team to go last. 
acknowledging mistakes along the way and the fact that not all conditions could be foreseen in advance. Preventing them from showing their motor advantages for the time being. The gearbox problem was solved quickly. When a fifth gear appeared, Vladimir couldn't resist and flew the tuk-tuk at 50 km per hour. It felt good, but the team had to go back to economy mode. After the rain, the bright sun came out. We were moving along with a rainbow. We managed to charge the battery up to a thousand watt. Personal records and better weather are ahead of the team. All the while, the tuk-tuk was lucky to have good company. Camels, rams, insects, horses and goats. And occasionally, they were able to mingle with fans. The tuk-tuk is especially a joy for children. It is worth continuing the journey for the sake of such emotions.